Medical professionals have read it, what was a time where a patient ignored you and almost died because of it? When I was in medical school had a gentleman in his late 60s come in for chest pain, found to have a large heart attack, very impressive steamy and lad by EKG. Refused emergent cardiac catheterization, go through the arteries and put a stent to open up the vessel of the heart, so he could bring his car home and planned on taking an ambulance back to the hospital. He was in the parking ramp and it cost $20 per day to park. Came back by ambulance in full arrest, no pulse, and died. Doc had to call his son and explain what happened, he was like yeah that sounds like dad, he's always been cheap. Next story. Had a throat cancer patient, we offered him surgery to remove the tumor, it was a fairly conservative surgery, he left because he didn't want a mutilating surgery and his daughter-in-law had been studying magnet therapy and she was quite good with it, his words, he came back a year later, and was out of reach from any treatment, his cancer was so advanced that there was nothing we could do for him. Next story. We had a college student come into the ER and had a wonderful case of appendicitis. He needed to get surgery ASAP as surgery is way easier and safer if done before it ruptures. He called his parents to let them know and they told him to refuse because he had a test upcoming in the week and they didn't want him to miss it. He left the ER against medical advice while we were all telling him that if your appendicitis gets worse and ruptures it can definitely lead to death. The kid luckily comes back about 10 hours later after it ruptured, he gets the emergency surgery and the amount of time he got to spend in the hospital probably doubled. Next story. Please don't get up on your own. Then he gets up on own and pulls out line going into jugular that leads directly to the heart and proceeds to bleed all over everything until he pass out and almost dies. Again. Next story. One time at the VA after adult circumcision. Do not have sex or masturbate for six weeks. Decided to masturbate the next day. All stitches tore. Next story. Had a patient stop taking his heart failure meds in favor of cocaine. Next story had a repeat patient, not quite frequent flyer status, as a medic that would always call for a severe allergic reaction to shellfish every other month or so. She had always had the allergy and knew her reactions were getting worse. After a year, six or seven calls, of this silliness, my crew and I stayed in the hospital ER with her and talked at length about the situation since she'd always stay mum about how it kept happening. She told us she comes from a patriarchal culture and her father made this amazing seafood soup. If she didn't eat it and force her body not to reject his gift to the family she would lose her car, phone, or whatever punishment her father deemed necessary. We pleaded with her to do whatever it took to show him it was deadly and carry her EpiPens with her. Fast forward a few years when I altered course into nursing and joined the ER. Saw a familiar bloated face. Turns out she had gone off to college in another state and hadn't been home for a while, but had visited her folks for a holiday. Of course she had the soup and despite hitting herself with the EpiPen when her throat started tightening, the reaction continued. Her mom, who I had never seen before, told me she tried to eat it fast and rushed to the bathroom where she was found on the floor. Medics couldn't tube her in the field so tried medical management until they could drive her to our ER. Doc performed a tracheotomy at the bedside and she went to the ICU. Took a week for her to recover and I was told by the ICU nurses that her father finally got it that her allergy was a real medical condition. Next story. I've read that the most common reason for a surgery to be re-performed is the patient not following doctor's orders during recovery. Doctor says, don't ride your bicycle for six weeks. Patient hears, don't ride your bicycle until you feel you can. Next story. Didn't die, but did lose an eye as a result. Young kid, 20, with bad diabetic retinopathy from uncontrolled DM type 1, had eye surgery to remove blood and scar tissue from inside the eye. We told him to take it easy for a few weeks. He went to Six Flags. Roller coasters are bad. Retina completely detached, I got soft and painful, had to be removed. Next story. Not a med professional, but my aunt is and I'd like to share her horrifying story. Next story. She once had a patient, young guy in his early 20s, who had very poor hygiene. Didn't shower regularly, didn't brush his teeth, wore the same clothes for days on end, etc. Next story. Erk he one day came in with a nasty rash on his lower abdomen slash pubic area that was starting to show signs of infection. She provided antibiotics and instruction and extensively stressed to him to improve hygiene and keep the area clean otherwise it'll just keep coming back or get worse. Next story. Well, as the story goes, he didn't pick up the prescription and apparently choose to just keep putting A and D gold ointment on the area. She later found out he ended up in the ER after going into shock at work, turns out he ended up getting gangrene in the area and it had spread to his penis and scrotum which had to be removed. Next story. My dad tells a story of a morbidly obese woman who came into his clinic and after an exam told her simply, if you don't make drastic changes to your lifestyle and diet and start losing weight you are going to die. She was dead within the week, her family tried to sue because my dad was clearly a witch doctor and cursed her to death. It was sad all around. Next story. I am a nurse and I had a very polite and lovely patient trying to remove all manner of chest tubes and IVs after a motorcycle accident. He was obviously delirious from the pain meds and the head injury but very nice still. I left him in the care of my coworker for my lunch, 10 minutes into my lunch break I see him stagger past the break room door like something out of The Walking Dead, trailing blood everywhere, only to collapse out cold a couple of seconds later. Said he needed the bathroom. I'd cow the F he pulled his own chest tubes out. Removing them always makes me cringe let alone doing it to himself. He was put back to bed, this time in the ICU, 
and got some more sedation and even though him ripping it all out set him back a couple of weeks he still discharged and came to say hi and thanks on the way out. The happiest delirious patient I ever had. What a bloody trooper. Ha ha. Next story. We had a mom in the NICU who would constantly kiss her premature baby on the mouth. Several nurses educated her around why that's not safe for the baby, and thankfully documented their teachings. This was during cold and flu season, and became even more concerning when the mother was coming in with cold-like symptoms, coughing, sneezing and obvious congestion. She still continued to kiss the baby right on the mouth. The baby was almost ready to go home by this time, but got extremely sick. The baby ended up on a ventilator and had quite the extended stay with many, many close calls. Next story. It happened so often it was almost a non-issue. We would basically just shrug our shoulders and and say Vailp. I had a patient who kept adjusting her insulin dosage against my advice because she was terrified of having her feet amputated like her mom. So she had several occasions of dangerously low blood sugar, one of which put her in the ICU. Had a lady who had the opposite problem, raging diabetes but in deep denial, so she would never take her insulin, so she was in the ICU multiple times for the diabetic ketoacidosis. Had a ton of patients on dialysis who skipped dialysis for whatever reason, didn't feel like going, had a fight with boyfriend who was her ride, took a vacation to a city without a dialysis unit, etc etc, so they would come in with their electrolytes all left and had to get emergency dialysis inpatient. Had a billion old fat men with chest pain for weeks refused to come into the hospital to be evaluated for cardiovascular issues and either die at home or come back a week later with extensive mees. Half of my patients with COPD were still active smokers despite my exhortations, one had burned scars over a third of his body from the last time he smoked around his O2 tank. Had patients take extra doses of benzodiazepines, Xanax, Valium, etc., and end up in the hospital with overdoses. Next story. Not a doctor, have worked in addictions field. Too many clients have died or will die because despite the repeated warnings from their doctor that they have almost no liver function or that what they're drinking is giving them all sorts of brain damage they continue to drink hard. But a lot of these guys feel like they have nothing to live for but the bottle. It's really heartbreaking. Next story. My wife is a labor and delivery nurse. When a baby is born they give it some vitamin that the baby can't produce itself for the first six months of its life, or something like that, I think it's vitamin K to help with blood clotting. It's potentially lethal if the baby doesn't get this obviously as they can bleed out internally. Vailp, one mother didn't want their kid getting vitamin K cause anti-vaxxer. Baby ended up dying in the NICU, no way to know if the lack of vitamin K contributed to the death or not but, I think most medical professionals would point to it being part of the reason the baby died. Edit, to clarify, the cause of death was related to a bleeding issue. I don't recall the cause of the bleeding or what the specifics of the issue were but ultimately the baby doesn't get the clotting aid, baby bleeds to death, lacking the clotting aid likely played a role in the death.